What is up, guys? Welcome back to Stay Fighting Secrets, where our mission is to bring you guys inspiration, education, and a ton of training tips to help you on your fitness journey. In today's episode, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the difference between like individualized programming, CrossFit class programming, and just doing your own thing. Uh, and really getting an understanding out of how to get the most out of your training for your specific goals, whatever those goals might be. Even if it is just GPP, you want to feel your best and you enjoy going to the gym and you want to have a good workout and call it a day. I want you guys to really understand what matters most and a couple of the problems I see that people are having when it comes to trying to figure that out for themselves, especially in a CrossFit class. So First things first, as always, if you get any value out of this episode or any of my episodes, please let me know. Shoot me a DM, shoot me a message, put some comments in the YouTube uh, feed, whatever it is. I don't even know. I want to hear from you. I want to know that you're listening, you're watching, and that I've been able to help you in some way, shape, or form, especially if you're a CrossFitter out there because you know you speak to my heart. I've been doing CrossFit now for, geez, going on 13 years. And uh, it's funny because I, I was thinking about this this morning and I'm actually going to make either a second episode, probably going to be more of an Instagram reel about this is all of a sudden I've been getting almost triggered and I hate using that word, but by so many of these athletes out there, and I'm not going to use any names, whether they're, you know, regional level athletes, games level athletes, whatever from, you know, posting these transformations and they're like, you know, this was me, you know, training four hours a day and, you know, killing myself and, and doing all this workouts and now here's me now I lost 25 pounds and I did it with macro coaching or, you know, I did it with macros and it's just like, can we please stop? Okay. I just, this is good. I got to talk about this right now. Can we just please stop? Okay. Because I'm an athlete and I'm always going to be an athlete. All right. These people are taking things so out of context and, and I'm not putting any names out there. A lot of them respect them as athletes, respect them as people, but it's frustrating, okay? Because here's the difference, all right? They're trying to connect with people that are going to the gym for two hours a day because they want to lose weight. And absolutely, people do not need to be in the gym for two to four hours a day that are literally just trying to lose weight. There's no reason for that. Hour a day, maybe 45 minutes a day, focusing on activity outside of the day, controlling your calories. Your lifestyle should be the way you want to live for the rest of your life. Okay. But athletes are out there talking about how like, oh, they were just busting their ass so hard and they weren't getting the body they wanted. And now they're like doing macros and cutting calories and they're getting the body they want. It's bullshit. You had a different goal at that time. So are you telling me that you weren't happy while you were competing? So why were you doing it? You were trying to be an athlete to lose weight, that's a pretty shallow why. And I have to get off this tangent because it's been really bothering me. It's like, it, I feel like they're selling that they like were in this like bad place while they were literally trying to be an athlete and they gave it up and now they're so happy and they're so lean. Guys, it doesn't like, it's not that way. It's okay. So this is why this is triggering to me because you know, in my world, all right, I focus on competition. I like, I want to compete. Um, so my training is geared towards competition, but I enjoy that. My lifestyle is structured. I do have to eat a lot of calories. I do have to prioritize my workouts, but that's a choice. Being an athlete is a choice. And at that point, these people were making this choice to pursue this goal. So it's okay to say, hey, at one point in my life, like I really cared about being an athlete. And that was really something that meant something to me. And I don't, all those experiences I, 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 I embrace and I'm happy and I'm proud of, but this is me now. And I let go of that person. And I've stepped into this other person who is you know, living a life of, you know, being a mom and being a, a coach and trying to inspire other people. And, and what I'm here to tell you is like, you can't compare yourself as an athlete and try and connect with people that are in the gym for two to four hours a day because they want to lose weight. It's two very different things. Okay. Because when you're training to be an athlete, you're also fueling to be an athlete and you're, or you're trying to fuel to be an athlete, whatever it looks like to you. Your whole life is about pursuing better. The people that are going to the gym, killing themselves on 
treadmills and running and extra cardio and extra weights and all this stuff for the sole purpose of their body composition are not in the same place as you were when you were competing as an athlete. Now, like I said, if your mindset at that point was, I'm doing all this to achieve this body, then you weren't really trained to be an athlete. You were using that as a scapegoat. So this is why this triggered me a little bit. And I just had to just go off on a tangent with that. But anyways, so main, main purpose of that is to get you guys to understand is like, listen, if when I walk away from competition at whatever time that is, I will always be an athlete. I will always be proud of all the work I put in. I will never look back at even the mistakes I've made in the past. I've made a lot of mistakes. Even right now, I'm living through the fact that I've let myself regress. But I don't like look back and be like, I was so miserable. I I made these choices for myself. I decided that this is what I wanted for my life. Nobody else. Nobody is forcing somebody to be an athlete. You, you force it on yourself. And I will always remind people that whether you compete or you just like being athletic, that's a choice we make. And that no, you don't, you don't have to feel like bad about that. So that's my main thing. And I don't want my message to ever be, this was me killing myself in the gym for four hours a day. Now here's me training for 60 minutes a day and getting better results. No, my, my goals were different. You know, like it's a different goal. Like that's the biggest thing that I just don't, you know, you can't put people in the same place. Whereas there are a lot of women out there and a lot of men out there that are literally burning the candle at both ends because they think that that's what they have to do to lose weight and they don't have to. We'll say that for a whole other tangent though. Anyways, that CrossFit gets me all fired up. So anyways, now we're going to today's topic. All right. So today's topic is all about programming. So here is the biggest problem I find with a lot of people that reach out to me for nutrition coaching is, um, you know, with CrossFit classes specifically, we'll talk about that first is, um, you know, the programming is set, you go to the gym, you like the community, um, and the workouts are on the board and you do the workouts every single day. Now there's a couple of problems with this is one is CrossFit programming is not standardized. So you have different gym owners doing different programming. And you have to trust the program. You have to honestly believe in the coach and the program that you have, which is also why I highly recommend if your goal is to, you know, enjoy CrossFit for long haul and to actually get the benefits of it, you want to make sure that you're doing a little CrossFit shopping. You're not just picking the first box that goes to you. Now, if you only have one box in your, in your city, then that's different. Then you might have to explore online options, but you want to make sure that, the program that you're going to is one that you believe in. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is how to know that you have a CrossFit program that's actually built out in a way that is going to get you results. So number one, when you go to the gym, there should be a well-taught class. It shouldn't be, uh, the workouts on the board and the, pro- and the warmups right there. And the coach is like on his phone. Um, and he's like, just go ahead and get started in the warm up, And like, there's not any engagement. You should have a, a, a class where the coach is there to coach and, He's coaching you through the warm up. He's coaching you through the movements, whether there's skill um, or strength beforehand. He's coaching you through the Metcon. It's not just about cheerleading. Okay. It's not just about good job, keep going. It's also about correcting and understanding that you guys need to be moving well in your classes. If you're not moving well, you're likely going to be missing a huge piece of your opportunity to get fitter because the way we move is going to engage different muscle groups, right? And this is the stuff that you guys shouldn't have to think about because you pay somebody else to think about it for you. So you want to make sure that you're having a well, well-led well class. That's a good sign of a good gym. When it comes to the programming, the main thing is, is that with CrossFit, when it comes to programming CrossFit, remember, there are a few things that we're looking for. Constantly varied functional movement performed at high intensity. And that we want to have different time domains. So we want to be able to see some short workouts a week, some longer workouts a week, some mid-range workouts a week. And a lot of gyms are going to program in that five to 15 to 20 minute range, which is kind of the sweet spot for most Metcons. Sometimes it'll be in intervals. Sometimes it'll be in, um, in just a straight set, but you should be looking to get your heart rate up most days between five and 25 minutes. Okay. So the five minute range is going to be like that shorter sprint workout. There's probably going to be some skill work and some, and strength work beforehand. And that's probably a day where you might want to go home and take a walk later on in the day, 
and be active throughout your day. Whereas there's other days that are going to be a little bit longer, a little bit more of a grinder. So you should see variance in the time domains of the workouts that you're doing. You should also see strength built in and not in a rushed fashion. It shouldn't be like, we're going to spend 10 minutes, you know, working up to a heavy snatch and that's it. And like, these people are now mentally like stressed out about working up to the snatch really quickly and then having to get ready for like another 30 minute workout. Like it shouldn't be so much in one hour that you can't do all the things you need to do. So there should be a priority on strength at least three days a week. So there should be some strength components in it because most people need to get stronger, not just for getting stronger for the way you look or because really honestly, strength doesn't always equal muscle mass. Um, you can hold go on a tangent on that in a second, but, um, but we want to be able to focus on getting stronger. There's a better anabolic response to that, a ventral, better hormone response from that, um, better central nervous system recruitment. So we want that strength stimulus. We want to be getting that, you know, really two to three times a week minimum. Uh, but you're also going to get some of that in some of your Metcons as well. So a lot of those shorter Metcons you might see are sometimes a little bit on the heavier side. Um, there should be, I believe some form of accessory work whether it's optional or not. But I do think that a lot of CrossFitters also struggle with just having muscular imbalances. And that I know CrossFit does a really good job of uh, finding those things because obviously we'll see that somebody might be getting some, you know, right lower back pain because they might be like not engaging their glutes right on their right side or whatever. Like we can recognize that, but we can't really correct it with just doing CrossFit, right? So we want to actually be isolating those movements to help get that person's brain to start thinking about those movements. So I do think there should be some accessory work programmed in, whether it's extra um, or not. And then obviously, yeah, I think cool down, warm up mobility or, you know, mobility is also important as well, but you should be seeing that there's components in, in your classes that look like that. Doesn't mean that they happen all, all the day or all the time, every single day. Some gyms are going to program where you are only going to lift one day. And that's your, that's your main purpose that day is to lift. Doesn't mean you can't later on go for a walk or something like that to get, you know, some exercise in, but your focus in your training that day is lifting. Because if you're only going to the gym for one hour a day, that's your focus is that as an athlete who trains multiple times a day, I might have an hour devoted just to lifting, but I'm also an athlete. So I might go back later to do cardio. That's not necessarily for most people that are just training GPP. You should be able to get it all done in an hour. So you want to see those components. Those components should also be coached. Now, this is where the problem kind of lies with um, the programming, though, and, and in terms of you guys getting results, is if a person is only going to the gym three days a week, okay, that's where per personalization comes in and taking some ownership and some responsibility for your own fitness. If you're only going three days a week, you are likely missing some of those days that the affiliate owner might be might be programming in based on a whole week is like, you know, maybe they're on a squat cycle and like Monday's a squat day. And if you're always missing Monday, then you're missing squat day or maybe vice versa. They kind of trickle it in as they go. And maybe Monday is squat day this week, but Wednesday squat day the next week, but you miss Monday this week and you miss Wednesday next week. You're missing those days. So if you're not going to the gym five to six days a week and you're doing CrossFit, that should be the goal. I honestly believe that you should be doing CrossFit five to six days a week. If you're just going once a day and it's just part of your routine. That's the way to get the most benefit out of CrossFit. Now, the way you approach your CrossFit class going five to six days a week is what matters most. So you should not be going into the gym every single day with this intent of I've got to push as hard as I can. I've got a PR. I've got to be number one on the leaderboard. You got to pull that shit out. Put it away. Don't need that stuff. You guys need to understand that you're going to the gym to get fitter every single day and that your best effort every single day is what you're looking for. But that doesn't have to always be 110%. So you have to recognize that you have to take ownership and responsibility that when you go to the gym, your goal is to get fitter, not to beat somebody else. And if you're always going to the gym, trying to beat somebody else, you're going to burn out. You're going to get injuries. You've got to go into the gym with a smart mindset. That also means listening to your body. And if you are, if you didn't sleep well and, and you see that the workouts like Fran, 21, 15, nine, thrusters and pull-ups, you're like, man. I know I just can't go that hard like today. Like I need to take it down a notch. You know, maybe you are going it, into it with this mindset. Like, you know what? I'm going to do 2159. And then I'm just going to get on the salt bike afterwards for like 10 minutes and just go at, like a moderate pace. Like you're, you're taking yourself seriously enough to recognize that like you have to listen to what your body needs. You need maybe a little bit longer of a workout to help get your body going. By the way, I just recorded a podcast with Chris Henshaw 
we talked about the benefits of zone two training, because that's another thing. It's going to help you guys recover a little bit. So goal focus there is getting to the gym five to six days a week. Even if you don't go to the gym five to six days a week, you might be doing CrossFit outside of the gym, right? Maybe you're going for a 5k on a Tuesday morning. You can run anywhere unless you're obviously in the cold weather. Obviously it's a little bit different, but maybe you're doing a home workout, you know, like there's body weight stuff you can do. You don't have to always, you know, if, if it's 2159 thrusts and pull-ups, maybe talk to the coach. You're like, Hey, I'm really feeling beat up today. Can I just do like air squats, and ring rows, and just double the number? Like do that. The goal is consistency and getting fitter. That's the main thing. Okay. So now next thing is, is that when it talk when we talk about CrossFit programs versus individual programming, this is where I think that there can be an issue is that I do think that the CrossFit class is enough and should be enough. But the problem is because affiliates are not regulated, sometimes people are at the mercy of a gym that's not giving them what they need, right? You might never be lifting. This is common is that a lot of people avoid lifting because the gym owners think that the athletes don't want to lift, that there's nobody that shows up on lifting days. If they're never doing cardio, they're never doing the monostructural stuff because nobody shows up on monostructural days, you're missing those components. So gym owners tend to cherry pick based on what they think their demographic wants, not with what their demographic needs, because they want you guys to show up at the gym. Sometimes you need something different and want something different. And this is where you have to take ownership and responsibility for what are your own specific goals. And I'm not saying that you have to not go to your CrossFit gym because I want everybody to stay in the CrossFit community. CrossFit community is awesome. But it might be, if you know you have a cadence in your classes, maybe you are you know, doing a few days at the gym and then a few days on your own. This is more for those of you guys that out there are kind of in a place where you're like, I'm ready to take control of my fitness. You guys should all be empowered with CrossFit to understand they're teaching you things that you should be able to utilize on your own. You shouldn't have to rely on the community to push you. You should be learning the tools needed to be able to push yourself. And yes, the community makes it more fun and more exciting, but you should not need to rely on the community to do your workouts. If that is the case, and that's a mindset thing that we have to fix and shift right now, because that's something that you have to get over. I work out by myself the majority of the time. And there's a lot of days that I'm not motivated, but I do it because it makes me feel good after I'm done. And I know the benefits of it. So when we go into individual programming, if you think you're like, you know what? I need to do something different. The classes aren't working for me. The The main thing is understanding is what are you looking to achieve? Why do we need to take you out of the CrossFit class? What are you not getting out of it? For some people, um, they just don't, they don't get the, they just can't get themselves into the mindset to like understand the stimulus of the workouts, right? Um, which is they maybe don't like that feeling of like going super hard. They need something that's a little bit more moderate for them. Maybe you do take ownership of your own programming and do something on your own, or maybe you are just lowering your standards in the classes. Like I, I know I keep bringing it back to classes because I want you guys to understand I'm not trying to take you out of the classes. I'm trying to get you to understand why the classes might not be working for you. Um, so going off on tangents now, cause I'm like getting a little bit tongue tied cause I just really love talking about CrossFit and, um, I'm a CrossFit enthusiast, passionate about it. And I know that a lot of you guys don't even listen to, don't even maybe do CrossFit, but it's just such a good modality for you guys to understand that there is so many benefits of it. And I don't like people feeling like they can't do it because they get frustrated with the movements that they can't understand and they can't do, which is the next piece of this. Okay. So when it comes to CrossFit, I think one of the biggest downfalls of it is that gym owners are programming for their top level athletes and also for their beginner athletes. Right. And that's, this is where modifications come into play. And I think the other problem with CrossFit classes is that people are so competitive and so stressed about the workouts that they don't understand how to actually scale them in a way that is going to give them the stimulus that they need. And also they feel guilty about that because they see scaling as weakness, not as a, a way to get themselves fitter. So the next piece of this is understanding that the stimulus of the workouts matter. So as I shift gears, as I talk to you guys about the CrossFit class, the programming, individualized training, is that when it comes to the programming side of things, there's also an intended stimulus. And that if you're not getting the right stimulus, you're also not going to be getting the right results. And this is where I think that a lot of people, before you go into the individual programming that I kind of talked about a little bit, is you might just need to be changing the stimulus that you're getting from your workouts. 
that you might not be getting the right stimulus. And this is where talking to your coach is so important so that you actually understand what am I looking to achieve with this workout? If you are going five to six days a week, you should be asking these questions because chances are their stimulus is very different from day to day so that they can touch on all of those things. Okay. So here's what you have to ask yourself is what type of athlete are you right now? And what type of athlete do you need to be? And I say athlete because everybody in a CrossFit gym should be considered an athlete. Okay. Cause you guys are doing athletic things. If you are trying to lose body fat, you find your aerobic base sucks. You're always stuck in wind. Um, you know, you like to lift cause it doesn't get you out of breath, but all of those things are obviously holding you back from getting leaner and getting fitter. You need to be doing more aerobic stuff, right? You need to be doing more high heart rate stuff. This means that when you see stimulus of a workout and it's like the goal is like unbroken reps or minimal rest, you know, like a 21, 15, nine, you shouldn't have to be staring at the bar. You should be scaling those workouts with weights and movements that allow you to move at that intended stimulus that you should be trying to get that same stimulus as the top level competitor in your gym, looking for that same time domain. In fact, I would bet if you guys out there would start to push the workouts by scaling them in a way that allowed you to finish in the exact same time as the fittest person in the room, you guys would actually probably see faster progress because now you're getting the actual metabolic response that your body needs. That is the goal. Okay. That is the goal of that. Now, the difference in this is that sometimes a person's goal is to get stronger and they see the snatch day as the day of, of their weightlifting. Okay. The snatch day is also a, is, is a strength day, but it's also very technical and that that movement might not be one that you should be pushing the loading on. It's okay to be like, you know what? Like I'm going to work like some snatch light technique work. And I'm also going to do some like heavy overhead squats to get the strength stimulus. Like those are things that you can talk to your coach about. Like, Hey, I know I don't want to go heavy on the snatch. So can I do like the power snatches, but can I also maybe do like a heavy overhead squat or like a heavy snatch grip push press to really work the strength component of it too. And I guarantee that coach is going to be so happy that you're actually taking ownership for what you need. And these are the things that you guys probably don't think about because you just do what's on the board. So it's becoming a smart athlete, becoming somebody that cares about your fitness enough. So make sure you're getting the intended stimulus. This also means not always looking at RX, like RX is the goal. RX is the standard. Okay. That's the base. And there's sometimes where people go above the RX and there's sometimes where people go below the RX, but the goal is that they're trying to get the intended stimulus. So for instance, if I go to a gym and I see 21, 15, nine, I just like using that, that because it's easy, um, of like thrusters and pull-ups and then you know, use that. I've done Fran a number of times. I know my Fran time. Okay. I, if I'm trying to get the same stimulus at my level as everybody else in the class, why don't I try and do 21, 15, nine of thrusters and chest of our pull-ups? I've made it a little bit harder for myself so I can try and make it the same feeling as everybody else in the class. And that's kind of scaling up to scale at the level of everybody else. So that's kind of what the goal is of scaling. It's not one is wrong and one is right. Okay. And the whole purpose of this episode today is to really inspire you guys to actually look at what you're doing in the gym, to actually take notes of what the stimulus is. Did you achieve that stimulus? What are, what weights are you lifting? How often are you lifting? Um, and what are your main goals? Because for a lot of people, their goals are to look better naked. They want to look good. And if you're not looking at your programming in a way, is, is it facilitating those goals as, as for athletically enough for me to change my body? Am I getting the right stimulus? You're not going to be getting those goals. You want to have those right stimulus, the right stimulus in your workouts. So that's it, guys. A little bit of a shorter episode today to kind of talk to you guys about programming for CrossFit to help you guys improve, obviously, your blood, your, your blood, your body composition, your, your performance, your fitness, and your overall enjoyment in the class. So hopefully that was helpful.